Well, today is a day a lot of you have been waiting for. We are finally going to show you our breeding plans for 2019. However, she's gonna squawk during the entire thing, so although her cage is across the room, I have to move you out of it so that you don't interrupt. So, I'll be back. I do want to start though by mentioning that all of our waiting lists are full for the year 2019. If we do for some reason have extra babies, like if enough people cancel by the time they're ready, then I will post the available babies on the available reptiles tab on the website. So you can always check there, but until then, I'm really sorry, but our waiting lists are full. Let's start with rat snakes. This is our scaleless Texas rat snake male, and we are going to be breeding him. He's a very nice animal. I actually bring him to programs. He's so friendly. Um, but we're going to be breeding him to this het scaleless female. Now, being a het means she carries one of two uh, genes for the, the scaleless mutation. And for the scaleless mutation, you need two of these genes in order to express it visually, since it is a recessive gene. So since he shows it, that means he has has both copies, one from mom, one from dad, of the scaleless gene. We have an angry hog nose that I'll get to in a little bit. However, the female only has one of those two copies, which was why she's still scaled, but she can produce scaleless babies. That might be kind of confusing. So if you're not sure what any of that meant, I suggest before continuing on, because there's going to be a lot of genetics talk in this video, watch our genetics video introduction right here. Assuming you've already watched that, we're going to continue on. We're going to pair this male scaleless, not only to this het scaleless female, but I have another het scaleless in here. Her favorite spot is under this. Yep, there she is. Uh, she bred for us last year and produced some beautiful babies. That's actually what I really like about these water dishes, is they count as a hide. <laughs> the snakes love them. And we have two more het scaleless rat snakes up here, and there's a, a pair, a male and a female, that are both het for it, and they're already paired up for, uh, for the season. And let me show you one of their scaleless babies from last year, just so you can kind of see what we are breeding for put these guys back. Here is the scaleless baby that we held back from them last year. It was from the two hets that are up above. Here he, oh, you're in shed. Really? You don't look as pretty today because you're in shed? That's okay. I can't share with you what his name is because it's inappropriate, but he is an adorable little baby scaleless. Rat snake, rat corn actually. They have a little bit of corn snake in them. And he just is so strange looking, but he's getting a lot of orange in his pigmentation, which I think is kind of cool. He started out white and we kept him because you could see his heart beating through his skin, and you still can, even though he's a little more orange. So I can't wait to see what he looks like as an adult. So this is one example of one of the snakes we will hopefully be producing this year. Next, let's move on to hog nose snakes. We are producing a few clutches of them. Here's that angry female. I'm actually gonna take her out. She is hopefully... Yeah, you look swollen right there, girl. You might be Gravit, or you were just, yeah, this is our pastel. Maybe you're just sitting funny. Uh, I'm hoping this girl is Gravit. I don't know. I think she is. It looks like you're maybe carrying something. She shed about a week ago, so if she is Gravit or pregnant, then she should be laying eight eggs really any time. So I have her lay box ready to go in the corner. She's been using it a lot, but no eggs yet. This pastel girl was paired with the pastel male here, and they are both 100%, supposedly, het toffee belly, which means they can, they should be able to produce some really pretty babies. So I guess just time will tell. I'm gonna set him back. And girl, I hope you lay eggs soon. Here, go check out your lay box and do your thing. And don't escape. We have more hoggies over here. And it's kinda dark over here, so I apologize. This is an anaconda mutation hognose snake, which is a co-dominant trait. He has a very reduced pattern down his back. And since it's co-dominant, you can pair this snake with a completely normal hognose snake, like this one right here, and you will get some conda babies. About half of them should be condas as well. And she, whoa, man, you feel gravid already. I, I paired them a little while ago. Maybe it took the first time. I wasn't expecting you to feel that thick. All right, we should should get some eggs pretty soon from her as well. Um, I'll just separate them after we're done filming, though. So I've definitely seen them lock up, so they nice. should produce some babies. Then we have this Conda female, and we paired her with an, uh, a completely normal male, Lumpy, the hognose that was sent to us by a fan. We decided to give him a girlfriend this year, and 
he knew exactly what to do like instantly so that was kind of cool they locked up so we should have some more normal and some more conda babies maybe next year we'll breed conda to conda and get some supers again our last hog nose up here which she, she's never bred for us before but we'll probably try again this year this is huff and puff she is het albino unfortunately we do not have anything with albino that's ready to breed right now so we're looking for an albino male or het albino male that we can breed with her but if not maybe we'll just breed some normals with her we're not exactly sure in the past she's only laid slugs for us which are infertile eggs so she might do that again this year too we i don't know if we'll get babies from her but we'll probably try anyway next we have the cuban false chameleons that are we are breeding again they have actually already started laying eggs we have seven eggs now uh, eight actually what i've been doing since we didn't have much success last year because we're not sure if we have the temperature wrong or the humidity so we're incubating them in small batches in different temperature and humidity levels so that we can see what works best so i have a group of eggs in here that i'm actually just letting incubate in the enclosure i have one egg that's labeled with this little flag that's uh she laid it here in the moth and i'm just leaving it there to see if maybe it'll hatch better there and honestly i haven't actually checked for eggs today but there's probably more in here the cool thing about the egg that's marked with the flag is that i actually caught the female who laid it burying the egg with the moss and they actually take their little feet and they grab handfuls of moss and they bury it we caught it on film and posted it on our patreon page for all of our patreon supporters to see it so that's kind of a cool piece of footage that we were able to grab thank you oh. oh you're so scary yeah if i were to just pick you up yeah she doesn't care so with any luck we'll produce quite a few of these this year well maybe we'll see how the uh, test batches go with our little experiment with their eggs but at the very least it'll give us a better idea of what the proper uh, temperature and humidity requirements are for their eggs because we have no problem getting them to lay eggs it's just getting them to hatch that seems to be the troublesome part unfortunately there isn't a ton of information out there on breeding the cuban false chameleon so we hope to learn a lot more this year next would be our garter snakes and we are very excited for these let me pull out a uh, prius she's about to pop any day actually there's one gravid snake in here that's who i'm pulling out all right here she is so this is our hybrid garter snake. She is actually half plains garter snake and half ribbon snake. And we are breeding her with our checkered garter snake. Now, this does produce quite a hybrid or quite a mutt of garter snakes, which does cause a little bit of controversy in the reptile world. Some people don't like hybrids, some people do. Our first time breeding her was last year and it was by complete accident. We had her housed in this big enclosure with the male checkered while we were setting up a more permanent enclosure for the male. They were together for a couple of days and apparently that was all it took for that male to get the job done. So we got a clutch of her babies and we raised them alongside of a pure checkered garter snake clutch. But what surprised us was that her hybrid babies were bigger initially, they were better eaters than the albino checkers, and they were calmer and easier to handle, and they actually grew faster too. So all in all, her hybrid babies from last year made amazing pet quality garter snakes. So that's why we decided to, since we're only selling them as same sex pairs anyway, so that the hybridization doesn't continue, we decided to breed them once again this year. And I mean, her babies were gorgeous too, beautiful babies. We held one of them back just to see how it looks as it ages and it's only getting prettier with every shed. So I do understand that some people don't like the idea of hybrids and that I completely understand, but we have decided to breed these because of all the good qualities that we saw in her babies. But I mean, check out how big she is. Look at how thick she is there. She shed about 10 to 14 days ago, so I'm expecting her to pop really any day although i say that every year and then the mom makes me wait until like july before they actually have babies so we'll see when she actually gives birth but i'd imagine it'd be soon if you look you can see what we call scale spread and that's this extra skin in between each scale that's a sign of either a fat or overweight snake or a gravid or pregnant snake unfortunately it's hard to exactly predict when you're going to get babies when it comes from a garter snake because these are not egg layers. Egg laying species, you can pretty much guess down to the, almost the day that the mother is going to lay the eggs. But garter snakes are live bearers, which means that they just have babies. And so it's very hard to predict when they're actually going to come. But as soon as they arrive, we'll make a video about it to show you all her new babies for this year. Is there anybody else breeding in there? Uh, not this year. We have like, uh, this is 
twiggy. I still, I don't want it to turn into a tour, tour video, but we have a couple California red sided in here. They're ready to, or the larger of the two is ready to breed, but we don't have a male that's ready to breed, so we will not be producing red sided this year. We're still waiting for him to grow up. So in the tank next to these ladies, we have our male albino checkered garter snake, and we're trying to pair him with Fatness Everdeen, our other, our female albino checkered. They didn't show much interest in breeding uh, earlier this year, so we have them together again in attempts to get them to breed. If they don't though, if they take the year off, that's fine. She had some beautiful babies last year, and hopefully she does this year too. So these guys aren't a guarantee like the hybrid babies are, but we're hopeful and we'll just, we'll see if they, if they breed. Although we don't have any bull snake eggs or any snake eggs yet, let me show you where we're going to incubate them. This is our heated green tree python room. It is heated to 86 degrees and it's obviously a few degrees warmer uh, up above since heat rises and a little few degrees cooler uh, on the bottom. So that way they have their own kind of temperature gradient. And it works really well for incubating eggs because 80 degrees, which is the suggested um, incubation temperature for a lot of the colubrids we're breeding, is right down here on top of one of those boxes. So we literally will just put the eggs down there and that's where they'll incubate at. The only things we have incubating right now are some false chameleon eggs that we're uh, incubating at various temperatures. And then we have some uh, gecko eggs. These are just fat. <gasps> oh, oh my gosh, actually. Uh, there's, I wasn't expecting that. There's a baby in here. Um, well, I guess we have our first baby of the year. What a cutie. Oh my gosh. Oh, so we are breeding fat-tailed geckos too. I wasn't going to say much about them though, because we only have three eggs this season. It seems like most of the girls want to take the year off, but we have our first baby. I can't believe that. What perfect timing. I, I was not expecting this, guys. <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't wait to see you come out. Ah! For those of you interested, this baby was incubated at, actually right at 80, it looks like 81 degrees, and this is day 60. So I knew it was due soon, but I wasn't expecting to see it today. This is really cool. And that leaves us with, and we are filming this segment on a different day. That's why there's a different outfit. That leaves us with the bull snake breeding room, which we are still so stoked about. I think the best plan of attack for these guys will be just kind of going from top to bottom one rack at a time. And so we'll just begin up here. We have our three giant Madagascar hog noses all paired up. It's a trio, a male and two females. However, they're normally like late summer breeders, so we're not ex really expecting them to breed, um, but we have them paired up just to kind of see. So, I mean, here, we'll take one out to show you. So this is one of our girls. And uh, she's the most handleable one, if you can believe it. I'm just gonna hood up for the camera too. But we are really excited to be working with this species, so I, I truly do hope that we're able to produce them, but we'll see. Um, fingers are crossed for those. And then this is where the male giant Madagascar lives. So there's nothing in that bin right now since he's with the girls. Then in here, we have our albino het hypo female bull snake. She was paired with the white-sided male that we have upstairs. Um, I don't think I showed him in this video, but he just looks like a normal white side. He's het albino and het hypo, so they should produce some beautiful babies. Now this snake, uh, Ed noticed a slug or an infertile egg just randomly, just one, inside of her closure yesterday. And we think that we, we got her about two months ago, and by the time quarantine was up and by the time we paired her, we think maybe it was a little too late in the breeding season for her, and she had already ovulated. So that's why that egg was infertile. So we put a, a lay box in here. We weren't expecting the eggs at all. And uh, we put her in here last night, and I'm curious to see what else is in here. Oh, 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 really? So what we're looking at here is, I mean, a sassy bull snake. She laid a clutch, but what I'm noticing right away is that these are all infertile eggs. Yeah, there's there's maybe two. Come here. I know. I'm sorry. You did a good job. Did you lay them all? Yeah, it looks like she laid all the eggs. That's that's the important part, is we wanted her to push everything out. All right, girl. Here you go. Good job. You laid your eggs. All right. We have, looks like, three fertile eggs. So you can tell the difference between a fertile egg and a slug, or an infertile, because the slugs are all yellow in color, they're smaller, and they're much more squishy. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, the yesterday's slug. We have twelve. Well, that one doesn't look like a slug. It's squishy, though. Yeah, but... 
But it's I guess we could white. we could incubate it just incubate in case. Plugs just in case. Yeah, we could do that. So this is this is our clutch of three, maybe four good eggs from that albino. That that is too bad. But that's all right. She she might double clutch. We're gonna just cover her uh, rodents in calcium powder for the next couple of weeks to replenish her calcium in case she does cl double clutch. Because I think what happened here was she just wasn't paired at the right time. It was too late for her. She had already started developing these eggs. But since some are fertile, some were probably made from retained sperm from last year. So we've got to set these up for incubation before we continue. All right, we've got all the eggs set up and marked. And uh, if you want to watch what we do or why we set them up the way we do, we have plenty of videos from last year's breeding season. Plus, when we start getting more bull snake clutches, we'll just do the whole process over again. So since there's only four eggs, we weren't going to really show you, but I'm going to put these in the incubator. All right, with that out of the way, let's continue with our breeding plans video. That was kind of an interesting surprise. In here, we have two hypo bull snakes. However, they are two different types of hypo. So this is the beautiful Trumbauer hypo that we received last year. This is a beautiful male. He's really friendly too. We decided to uh, we decided to hang on to him, and we are breeding him with a Stillwater hypo bull snake, and she is gorgeous. The only problem is since they are two different types of hypos. They are apparently not compatible, like they are two different genes. So we're going to test this out and breed these two, the Trumbauer hypo to the Stillwater hypo. And if all the babies look normal, then they'll just be double het. They'll be het Trumbauer and het Stillwater. And then we'll raise those up and see what a Trumbauer and Stillwater combo hypo looks like. Because as far as we're aware, that has not been created before. But who knows? Maybe their babies will look hypo and it'll be proven wrong that the uh, two hypos are incompatible. We won't know until they breed and we'll see. We were hoping to get a Stillwater male to breed Stillwater to Stillwater. Couldn't find one though, so it's all right. So in here we have, who are you? You're kind of showing. This is an albino with um, mystery hets. We got her, oh yeah, I can feel eggs in you. That's cool. Look at, so, Snakes will um, carry the eggs in the lower third of their body. So down here you can really see how thick she's getting. She is definitely gravid. You can see right where her tail begins here and it suddenly becomes thinner. Look at, she's holding eggs in there, guys. She was paired with Mr. Wilson, who is up here. He is our uh, hypo albino het white side, who's making a mess. So these two were paired up. All of their babies will be albino. And he is Het Whiteside and Hypo, and she has mystery hits. She's het for things, but we don't know what, and we won't be able to know until her babies hatch. So she, I'm really excited for. Uh, I'm really excited to see what her babies turn out being. But since you are nice and thick and gravid, I'm not gonna bother you anymore. We're gonna set you back. I don't have a lay box in here right now because I know she's not going to lay right now. And that's because gravid snakes or bull snakes anyway, along with many other snakes, will shed their skin about 10 to 14 days before they lay. It's called the pre-lay shed. So I'm going to put a lay box in there with full of dirt and moss after she sheds her skin. So at the bottom here, we have another pair of hypos. Again, this is a Stillwater hypo paired. Oh, you're looking gravid. Nice, you're showing it. Uh, paired to another Trembauer hypo, just another kind of experimental clutch. We figured we have the two Stillwater females, so we may as well breed them with something this year to get some babies. So we may as well experiment and see how compatible or incompatible the Trembauer is versus the Stillwater hypo. She is, she's looking good. They're paired right now because I actually didn't see any signs of her being gravid or any locks, but she's showing it now, so I might take that male out actually. As you saw before, this is just Mr. Wilson. He's not paired up anymore. In here we have paired up our pair of red bull snakes. You're moving your leaves everywhere, guys. The bigger one is, of course, the female. She, they, they've locked several times. We just have them together one more time just to be safe because it's rainy today. In case you don't know, um, pair your snakes if you're breeding them on rainy days or overcast days or the night before an overcast day because the drop in barometric pressure has proven time and time again to stimulate breeding behavior with snakes. So if you're breeding snakes, whether it's colubrids or ball pythons, put them together in the rain and you'll have much more success. And here is Bradley. Hi, Brad. She was paired with Peanut and they locked up almost immediately. He was definitely into her. 
And she, yeah, you're definitely holding eggs. That's cool. You're kind of pretty, you're pretty early along, but you're still, you're still gravid. So the big question is, are the babies going to be hers and Janet's from last year from retained sperm, or will they be in fact hers and peanuts? We won't know until the eggs hatch, but we're very excited for this clutch too. We're pretty sure we'd be able to tell based on the look of the snakes, whether they are peanuts, kids, or Janet's. We do have some sad news though. Uh, the, the backup plan, if Peanut couldn't figure out what to do, which he did, which was nice, uh, but if he couldn't figure out how to lock up with Brad, we were going to pair her with Janet again. But we, we sadly lost Janet a couple of weeks ago due to old age related problems. Janet had been showing symptoms of old age basically for the last two to three years, so we retired him from educational programs and he enjoyed retirement at our house. He had a uh, springtime with Brad, uh, but sadly a couple of weeks ago he prolapsed and we got everything back in and then he prolapsed again and passed away shortly afterwards. So it's been a really tough time recently so I'm distracting myself with all the bull snakes here but we did lose Janet, my very first snake, and I'm really gonna miss him but we're gonna move on. All right we have one pair left and they are also paired together just one last time to be safe and that would be our ghost bull snakes hypo white sided here they are the lovebirds they also have locked up several times successfully oh she looks grabbing oh yeah she's That's showing it too i'm gonna have to take him out he's she's definitely she's showing in shed too. she is in shed okay so what we might end up doing okay this guy's gonna get like super antsy Ugh, calm down stop it you're fine I don't need you with her anymore. Yeah, you did your job, it's okay. He's like, but I like being with her. Yeah, I like my girlfriend. This is the male ghost and he has definitely done his job several times. So we will have a nice clutch of ghost bull snakes. Hopefully sooner rather than later, since it seems like she, that might be her pre-lay shed. We're very excited for these. I love the ghost mutation, despite how sassy they are. For now, while we film, I'm gonna put you in here, but oh my goodness, you're so dramatic. We are going to have to give her a lay box after this and split him up. There you go. Okay, to do after we film. But that is everyone down here. So we have, what do we have planned? We have the bread and peanut clutch, the ghost clutch, the red clutch. We have the albino clutch that had a lot of slugs. That's four, right? We're at four? Yep. Okay, then we also have the other albino clutch down here. And then one for sure still water, because she looks gravid. And then this one is iffy. We'll kind of see. So I think we have six clutches of bull snakes for sure going this year. Possibly a seventh. And then all the other snakes we have plans for as well. The hog noses, the rat snakes, and so on. This is gonna be a big breeding year for us, guys. I am gonna we are both gonna be up to our ears in snakes. Do you know how many babies we're gonna have? A ton. Well last year we had like 55-ish babies total. We're gonna have like 150 to 175, I bet, this year. We should probably invest in new baby racks, shouldn't we? Probably. Our current baby rack has 18 slots. That's not, not enough. Even close to nope. Baby rack. <laughs> All right, well, there might be a new baby rack unboxing video in the future because I just realized we need to buy more of those. All right, so on the topic of babies, even though we're having a lot of them this year, our waiting lists are full for all the species we are planning on producing. If we have any extras by the time we make it through our waiting lists, like if there's enough cancellations, then I will post available snakes under the Available Reptiles tab on the website snakediscovery.com. But until then, I'm very sorry. Um, we are not able to add more people onto the waiting list. But that doesn't mean you can't have fun watching the progress of all of our clutches. So stay tuned, keep an eye on the channel. We will post updated um, videos of all the clutches that we have. I'm guessing there will be a video coming out somewhat soon with these clutches of snakes that are really showing signs of being gravid uh, and we'll show you how we prepare all of the eggs for incubation. But until then, thank you again for all of your support for those of you watching as well as to all of the Patreon supporters for all of your amazing generosity in backing this channel. We really appreciate it. Thanks again everyone and we'll see you next time. What should we do with these? We give a couple of wrecks. Okay, let's try it. We'll give her. We'll give her these. That's okay. Good. Okay. Rex. Rexy. Oh, I didn't even show you the frisbee. Here. All right. Well, training frisbee. Yep, I did have food. Oh, yes. You you ate like two days ago, girl. Cave. 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 Hey. Cave. Cave. Yeah. 
Yeah, poof down it. He missed, he missed it. Too. Cave! 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 Rex! Ugh! Let go! Let go! There you go. How is that? Mmm, gooey. Is that tasty? There's no waste in this house. It's really nice having a garbage disposal. Cave! You're gonna take it from me. I have to hide. I have another one in for you. Water. Rex. Hey, I have one more. Come here. One more. Good girl. <laughs> Thanks for cleaning those up for us. <laughs>